Invite them in. That's the title of today's Daily Dose. Invite them in. Look, have you ever been sitting at a red light waiting for the next turn arrow? You know, you're about five cars back, and, and so you're hoping that you can get through before it turns red again. So here it is, right? Here it is, here it is. The arrow finally turns green. It's time to go. But the person in the front of the line takes their good old sweet time, knowing that they have plenty of time to get through the intersection. What do they do? They slowly make their move, oblivious, unaware, are just really not even caring about the line of others behind them, the others that also want to make that turn before the light goes red again. Can you tell that this is kind of something that bothers me a little bit? I know I've shared this before, but, but it is. It's, it's still so frustrating, right? So look, as we enjoy the benefits, let me tie this into what I want to talk about. As we enjoy the benefits and the blessings of belonging to the family of God, do you belong to the family of God? Look, it's a blessing. When we're enjoying this belonging to a wonderful local congregation here at Evident Life Church, we got to be aware that there are a line of people behind us. People who are waiting, hoping that they too can make that turn, can beat that red light, and can belong, belong to the family of God. Be part of a group of people connecting with God and connecting with one another. Well, once upon a time, we had a family leave Evident Life Church because they said, quote, it's changed. We're leaving because, why? Well, it, things have changed. It's changed. I asked them, how has it changed? And they responded, well, well there are more people. We liked it when, when it was just our smaller group. We don't want to grow. We want to keep it the way that it was. So they left. I mean, if you... Think about it, that's insanity. It's selfishness that robs them, really, even, of so much. It's self-destruction, a selfishness that leads to self-destruction. This, this all broke my heart when I heard this. They had so much to give others. And now they and others, and us, all of us, we're going to be missing out, right? This family had made the turn. They beat the red light. They belonged, but they missed God's heart for the others who were behind them, still waiting and hoping and needing someone to bring them in. Let's talk a bit about who we should be bringing in. I believe that, that we can gain some insight, a lot of insight from Jesus, obviously. In this parable of the great banquet, it's found in the Gospel of Luke chapter 14. See, Jesus is responding to someone bringing up this great feast in heaven, this celebration when the, the church will be united with Jesus for all eternity. And Jesus wanted to make sure that everyone understood who he wanted at this banquet. And so we pick it up here in verse 16. When Jesus replied, he said, A certain man was preparing a great banquet and invited many guests. All right, so here's our clue, our first clue right off the bat. Who does God want us to bring? Who does Jesus want us to bring to the banquet? Bring into the family of God. Bring into the local congregation. Bring into the fellowship of the saints. He said many. God's heart is for many. You see, the line is long. There are many behind us. And God wants us to bring the many in. Let's go back to Scripture, verse 17. At the time of the banquet, He sent His servant to tell those who had been invited, come, for everything is now ready. All right, so Jesus points out clue number two. Clue number two, that the attendance isn't random. It's not by accident, but instead people are supposed to be invited. There were invitations sent out. People are supposed to be invited. So what does that tell us? That we're actually supposed to be formally, sincerely inviting people to join us, to follow us, to belong. We don't just hope that they come, but we invite them to come. Verse 18 says this, But they, all alike, began to make excuses. The first said, Look, I have just bought a field, and i got to go and see it. Please excuse me. Another said, I've just bought five yoke of oxen, and I'm on my way to try them out. Please excuse me. Still another said, I just got married, so I can't come. And the servant came back and reported this to his master. 
Then the owner of the house became angry and ordered his servant, go out quickly into the streets and alleys of the town and bring in the poor, the crippled, the blind, and the lame. And here we are. We got clue number three. Who are we supposed to invite in? Who are we supposed to be bringing along? Jesus. Jesus is saying that just because people don't come doesn't mean that we stop inviting. That's clue number three. See, what we'll do often is we'll have a bad experience of inviting one, two, three friends, coworkers, neighbors, and nobody will come. And we think, well, I guess that doesn't work. People really don't want to come. I'm going to stop inviting. But no, Jesus is trying to point out here just because people don't come, don't respond to the invitation, doesn't mean that we don't stop inviting. In fact, Jesus encourages us to do the exact opposite. We're supposed to ramp it up and spread our nets even wider. Verse 22, come on, let's pick it up again. Sir, the servant said, what you ordered has been done, but there's still room. Come on now, did you hear that? Did you hear the heart of God? There's still room. Do we hear God's heart? This is clue number four. Clue number four, there is still room. And I believe we need to hear that today. There is still room. And God wants to fill that room, fill that banquet table with as many as who will come. Verse 23, then the master told his servant, go out to the roads and the country lanes, make them come in. Come on now, pull them in, right? So that my house will be full. That's God's heart. He wants his house full. And I tell you, not one of those men who were invited will get a taste of my banquet. Now he was speaking of those who had rejected the invitation. Those who rejected the invitation to belong to his family through Jesus himself, right? Anyway, that was Luke chapter 14. So Jesus wants wants us to invite them in. And who do we bring along? We just read the heart of Christ right there. We bring everyone because God wants them at His table. He wants them at His table. Yet, check this out in, in his book, book, Unchurched Next Door. The Unchurched Next Door, uh, a writer, uh, Dr. Tom Rayner, he shares this statistic and he says this. Check this out. He says that 82% of the unchurched are at least somewhat likely to attend church if invited. But look at this, only 2% of church members invite an unchurched person to church. 98% of churchgoers never extend an invitation in a given year. And this is tragic, and I believe this hurts the heart of God. So church, I want us to grab hold of God's heart. And I want us to be those who are intentional, those who are, are biblical. Let's be like Jesus and let's make room and invite him in. Jesus is worthy of the reward of his suffering. Have a great weekend. And remember, keep your eyes open, your heart open, and invite them in. God bless you.